What are some of the things that you see in the popular culture that are, that are disconcerting? Well, for sure, you've got a fundamental transformation going on of the type of government and economic system that we've had for nearly four centuries. So there was an effort through Marxism to move into the cultural aspects as well as the economic aspects as well as the governmental aspects. Um, kind of the horse they're riding right now, the Trojan horse, if you will, is the 1619 Project oh, Critical yeah. Race Theory. Um, but all of that will result in a massive change, not only of the way we do history, but the way we do government, the way we do education, the way we do economics. It, it, it's, it's the Trojan horse for all of it. So what's behind the 1619 Project? Well, I think it's interesting if you go back several decades, we can track back in the 1970s and 80s, the, the founding fathers, it, they were identified as being people who didn't have good moral standing, right? That maybe they were adulterers. And then you can go forward to maybe the 1990s and, and well, these men weren't Christians and they were atheists, agnostics, and deists. And then the early 2000s, well, they were all slave owners. And we've literally for decades, we've seen attacks on the founding fathers. And so the 1619 Project is no different in the sense of it's trying to reshape a lot of the history. And, and part of the underlying, underlying uh, philosophy behind it is you identified with this cultural Marxism coming in. The idea is if, if we want to change America from a constitutional republic, if we're going to get away from the free market, if we're going to do something different, the first thing you have to do is you have to demonize mm -hmm. the people who made America what America was. And once you have demonized the founding of America, then you can tarnish every document we have because, well, these racist founding fathers did the declaration, so that must be racist and the constitution must be racist. And so you can target the very foundation of the nation and say, all of this is bad and evil, therefore get rid of it, which is largely what the 1619 Project tries to do, saying that America's true founding was when we first had slaves in America. And even there, they missed so much history in their accusation against America. Show us the truth. What, if, if 1619 is false, and I believe that it is, that's not the beginning of America. What is the truth? Uh, let me just take a couple of dates to throw out because the assertion, here's New York Times Magazine, which really introduced the 1619 Project, which got the Pulitzer Prize, which is kind of a weird thing since a huge influence in the Pulitzer Prize the New York Times, they kind of voted for themselves and gave themselves an award. But nonetheless, if you just take the 1619 premise, their premise is that 1619 is when slavery was introduced in North America, and thereafter North America did everything it could to make sure that that was the identity of America through the founding, everything, slavery. Except 1619 is not when slavery was introduced. You can go back to 1526 and say, well, the Spanish brought slaves to North America and the Carolinas. 1560, we had slaves brought to San, San Augustine area down in Florida. So it's And we're not talking African slaves. African slaves, that's right. right? African because slaves. If we're talking slaves, big picture in general, long before Columbus even right. lands in America, you had natives enslaving other natives. That's absolutely it a fact. I'm Cherokee by background, and yes, that is absolutely a fact that native peoples enslaved other native peoples and even some of their own. Well, right. uh, let me take that step further. In the 1860 census, jumping ahead from where Tim is, in the 1860 census, the largest percentage slave owner in America were Native American tribes. 12% wow. of the five major Native American tribes, 12% of them were slaves. And when Andrew Jackson did the Trail of Tears and forced the Cherokees out of Georgia, Florida into the, the, the five tribes region, those Cherokee uh, tribes brought their slaves with them. So slavery is not just what's portrayed, but back to your point. Well, and this is what I would say is that as we're pointing out some of the historic fact, like this isn't to disparage any people group or any right, time frame other right. than to recognize when people talk about the founding fathers had slavery or there's slavery in America in the 1600s, I would just like to know what nation in the 1600s didn't have slavery, right? And this is not to justify or defend slavery, right. but we're using this as the accusation to say America, right? The standard of we're using to say America's evil is slavery. And yet, it's, if you use the same standard in every nation, every nation in the history of the world was a bad nation. And yet, what we're seeing unfold now from like critical race theory, from the 1619 Project is, and it really follows along the lines of cultural Marxism, of, of Marxist critical theory, right? Which I know you guys have unfolded many times in your conversations on the show before, but in critical theory where you have oppressed people groups. And, and to be oppressed, there needs to be an oppressor. And really, you need to inform the people that they are oppressed, because they might not even know they're oppressed. You have to teach them that they're oppressed and teach them what the oppressor is. And they tried it with economic theory early on in America. And that didn't take because in America, there's too many people. Up upward mobility. There's too many people born in poverty that have made an amazing life for themselves. And, and we have too big of a middle class. So that theory didn't stick. So they said, we need to find a new take on critical theory.